Our lead story tonight, the government versus Rahul Gandhi and it's becoming personal after he was disqualified as MP on Friday. He's now got a notice to vacate his MP bungalow about today on Monday. So literally just about uh, two days apart, only the weekend in between, the government moving at super fast speed. Rahul Gandhi will lose his 12th Tukluk Lane bungalow until, of course, if there's a court hearing against it or a court stay against this. Uh, Vedant, you're there currently. What's the situation there? Is Rahul Gandhi in his residence currently? He first moved in here after he became MP. What's the reaction coming from Rahul Gandhi's camp? Well, Sonia, we reached out uh, to uh, Team Rahul Gandhi and uh, sources close to him, and they uh, have so far refrained from responding to that particular legal uh, no to that particular notice that has been served by the Housing Committee of Lok Sabha. But of course, let me show you around here. So, of course, uh, this uh, uh, 12th Tughlaq uh, Road bungalow here in Latians Delhi, of course, has been synonymous uh, with Rahul Gandhi. It's a Type 8 bungalow, the highest in that particular hierarchy, and uh, he's been staying here, as you rightly pointed out, uh, since uh, 2004 when he first became member of parliament so he's been here you know for 19 years and um, it's it's a sprawling six uh, uh, bedroom bungalow and of course it's been s uh, synonymous with rahul gandhi in fact just two months back sonia he talked about how this is his only residence here in the national capital and this is his only home uh, in fact he also invoked memories of 1977 he said that you know it was difficult when uh, indira gandhi lost and they had to leave their official residence and uh, that this is his only house here and uh, his only other ancestors home is in Allahabad. So, of course, uh, that was something he said just two months back. Uh, but two important caveats here very quickly, Sonia. One is that, uh, you know, remember, he also is a recipient of special security, recipient of Z plus security. So, according to that, he is entitled to government accommodation. So, mm -hmm. that is something that we have to keep in mind as we report uh, this particular story. The other important point is that, uh, you know, when that uh, notice, that disqualification notice was served, uh, it was marked to the directorate of uh, estate and so far we, we, we've reached out to the urban planning ministry as well and so far you know they've been tight-lipped on this uh, but today of course we saw Minister Hardeep Puri really hitting out at Rahul Gandhi and the next thing uh, could be to see Rahul Gandhi actually vacate uh, this particular residence and here of course uh, the 12th Tughlaq Road residence is synonymous with Rahul Gandhi as I said and uh, so far the Congress has not responded to this particular uh, uh, this particular notice. BGP However, has, the BGP has been tweeting and the BGP is saying Vindictive. that this is not Rahul Gandhi's personal property, it's government property, so if he's not an MP, he should lose that uh, bungalow. And however, the point also being made by the Congress is that this is all moving at super fast speed. Well, absolutely, Sonia. In fact, that's something that the Congress has uh, been saying. In fact, yesterday, Priyanka Gandhi said the same thing. Today, Mr. Kharge made, uh, you know, the same point that, you know, the BJP is really going after Rahul Gandhi because, uh, you know, he's been uh, sort of demanding that uh, Joint Parliamentary Committee probe. And, uh, you know, this really is all a part of that larger standoff between Rahul Gandhi and uh, the BJP government. Mm -hmm. uh, so today, of course, also we saw that joint uh, protests by opposition leaders and today uh, all... Uh, the, Cong the senior Congress leaders made the same point that this is all political vendetta. However, uh, the BJP and many experts have pointed out this is part of procedure. Uh, it was expected when the disqualification notice was given that uh, as part of it, as uh, you know, something that I follows that the disqualification become, notice will be an ev eviction That point notice. has become a, a valid one, uh, Vedant, that this is a battle which is becoming increasingly bitter. It's a political battle, heated and bitter. And we saw that in Parliament today because, in fact, now we are into the third week of Parliament and and today it functioned the Lok Sabha for literally under 30 seconds. Let's just see what are the top points that happened politically today. Well, there's a huge battle now among the opposition after Rahul Gandhi's remarks against V. Savarkar. A huge divide with his Maharashtra ally Udhav Thakre speaking out against it. And today uh, the Udhav Sena boycotted the Congress meeting, opposition meeting and a dinner that has been called today. Udhav has warned Rahul Gandhi that we won't tolerate this. Shinde and Fadnavis, the Maharashtra duo, have stepped up the pressure announcing a Savarkar Yatra in the state. The opposition, meanwhile, held a Black Day protest. All the MPs of the Congress wearing black today against Rahul Gandhi's disqualification. The Trinamool, surprisingly, joined the Congress's black shirt protest, as did allies of the Congress in uh, different states. The BGP has said, we don't care about Congress uh, black magic. That's all they're left to. As Hardeep Puri said, they're getting an ass to run a horse's race. You know the contribution of people like uh, Savarkarji 
एंड यूर गेटिंग एज आई सेट गेटिंग एन एस टू रन हॉर्सेज रेस आज इतना वो डिमोरलाइज है कि वो शायद सिर्फ काला जादू पे फिर एक बार अपने आप को टिकाना चाहते हैं ब्लैक डे सच थिंग्स नेवर हैपन अर्लियर हम ना डरेंगे राहुल गांधी जी नहीं डरेंगे अपोजिशन पार्टी डरेगी नहीं दबेगी नहीं झुकेगी नहीं अ स्लैंगिंग मैच ऑल डे बिटवीन द कांग्रेस एंड द ऑपोजिशन ओवर राहुल गांधी डिस्कालीफिकेशन फ्रॉम पार्लियामेंट बट गुड न्यूज फॉर द कांग्रेस एज द टी एम सी ज्वाइन दिस ब्लैक शर्ट प्रोटेस्ट एट पार्लियामेंट अटेंडेड बाई नाइनटीन पार्टीज a rare display of opposition unity but there was ally trouble for the congress rahul gandhi sochta hai mera naam sabarkar nahi hai mera naam gandhi hai gandhi kisi se maafi nahi mangta as these comments made by rahul gandhi on saturday led to a huge divide in the maharashtra alliance uddhav thakre hit back saying his party would boycott a dinner organized by the congress tonight to discuss rahul gandhi's disqualification राहुल गांधी ने संगत एकत्र आलो आहोत जरूर लोकशाही संविधान फाटे फुटू दे मुद्दा मन तुम्हारा दिवस लुकुमशाही कड़े गेहना स्पष्ट मत है तुम्हारा पट्टे कि मैं संगा आज लेटर महाराष्ट्र चीफ मिनिस्टर एकनाथ शिंदे and deputy cm devendra fadnavis stepped up the pressure on uddhav announcing a savarkar gaurav yatra across the state and daring uddhav thakre to end the mahavikas aghadi alliance jo satantra vir savarkar ka apman sahan nahi karenge pehle bolte the biche abhi abhi jo hamara adhivashan hua usme sabhi log chup chap baithe the the maharashtra chief minister also changed his social media profiles to one of mr savarkar this shows how the bjp and their allies will be using this as a major political issue against the congress in mumbai with camera person praveen ji rohit sohit mishra and dtv and what has this actually meant for parliament for politics well it's been a complete washout of the parliament session so far it could actually end early this week itself this monday morning parliament adjourned literally within seconds amid a huge ruckus with opposition mps congress mps tearing papers and throwing it at the speaker now this complete washout of a parliament session has come after a number of years because in fact parliament had been functioning but this time the opposition claims is the government which is disrupting it the government says it's uh, the opposition but what's the political strategy behind this megha decodes it manne sadasya main sadan garima se chalana chahta hu sadan ki karwai 4 baje tak nishchit ki jati hai it took merely 35 seconds for the lok sabha to be adjourned today making it the 10th straight day when the house failed to function The second part of the budget session has been a complete washout from day one, making it just the second parliament session during Prime Minister Modi's tenure to be so. The last time a similar dramatic session was witnessed was in 2018, when the opposition did not allow the house to function on issues of special status to Andhra Pradesh and the fraud that had happened in the Punjab National Bank. This session. The second part of the budget session 2023 will go down in history as the second most unproductive in the last 23 years. Bharat ke sadan ka panch Bharat ko banam karne ki koshish ki hai. What made this particular budget session starkly different from any other in the past was the role played by the treasury benches. Never before have you seen the members of the ruling party stall the parliament, but this time they did that. to seek an apology from Rahul Gandhi over his democracy in danger remarks in London bada durbhagyapurn hai ke sadan ki karwai ko bar bar congress ke sadasya chalne nahi de rahe hain wo pure desh ka desh ki har vyavastha ka apman karte rahe usko kaise sadan bhi swikar kare और देश स्वीकार ये भारत की गरिमा पर भारत की प्रतिष्ठा पर उन्होंने गहरी चोट पहुंचाने की कोशिश की अगर हमने कुछ कहा कि डेमोक्रेसी यहां पर नहीं चल रही ठीक ढंग से संविधान के हम 
While the BJP gets the dubious credit of stalling the parliament for an entire first week, the following five working days were disrupted by the joint opposition who wanted a JPC probe in the Adani Hindenburg issue. Nothing changed in the second week either, but for one day when the government got the finance and the JNK appropriation bill passed in the Lok Sabha by issuing a BIP, and similarly today in the Rajya Sabha when the whip was there for all the BJP members. But other important bills that were listed for this session remains unattended. While for the opposition parties, the budget session came at a time when they were planning an all-out offensive against the BJP. On the other hand, for the government, uh, it also came at an opportune time because they intended to use this session to blow up what they are calling a huge insult to the country by Rahul Gandhi. And in all of this bitter political fight, it was the legislative business that became a casualty. In New Delhi, Mega Prasad for NDTV. The Supreme Court today questioned that the release of 11 convicts in the Bilkis Pano case was done according to remission standards in other such cases and asked the centre and the Gujarat government to present all the relevant documents for the release on the next date of hearing. The court said we have before us many murder cases where convicts are languishing in jails for remission without years. Is this a case where standards have been applied uniformly as in other cases too? Question Justice K.M. Joseph, who's part of the two-judge bench. The special bench of Justice Joseph and Justice B.B. Nagaratna was set up to hear this clutch of petitions challenging the Gujarat government's move to release the 11 men on Independence Day last year. The next hearing is now on the 18th of April. Well, a major verdict by the Supreme Court today regarding fraud bank accounts. The Supreme Court said borrowers must be heard before banks classify their accounts as fraud. The Supreme Court added that the classification as a fraud account results in serious civil consequences, adding that this amounts to blacklisting of borrowers and they must be heard before any such decision. Former Reliance Communication Director's accounts who declared fraud without hearing us was their claim in court. The centre moved court against a high court order. The top court ruled in the borrower's favour today, so an important judgment there. Other lead story tonight as we travel across live to Jerusalem where Israel has shut down with strikes across the country against Prime Minister Netanyahu's new proposed laws. The biggest uh, situation of course is public transport being shut down and all flights being shut down as airport employees are on strike. Also Israeli diplomatic missions across the world, even the Indian Israeli ambassador is on strike. Let's just look at the top uh, story on that before we go across to our special guest tonight. <laughs> Tens of thousands of Israelis poured into the streets of cities across the country in a spontaneous outburst of anger after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu abruptly fired his defense minister for challenging the Israeli leader's judicial overhaul plan. As Netanyahu called for protesters on all sides to behave responsibly and refrain from violence, Trade unions in Israel are now joining calls for nationwide strikes as part of the protests against the government. Protesters in Tel Aviv blocked a main highway and lit large bonfires, while police scuffled with protesters in Jerusalem and used water cannons near Netanyahu's house. Tel Aviv's international airport is halting all departing flights from the airport after Israel's National Trade Union Center called a general strike. It was never as big as it was today. This is not democracy. This is a new form of regime, what they call a procedural democracy or a hollow democracy. The reforms include plans that would give the government full control over the committee which appoints judges. Benjamin Netanyahu wants to get the new legislation through Parliament by the end of the week, but the new reforms will remove the checks and balances in Israel's democratic system and concentrate power in the hands of the governing coalition. Critics, meanwhile, also emphasize that Netanyahu, who is on trial for corruption charges, has a conflict of interest. Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. 
Joining me is Mr. Amichi Stein, the diplomatic correspondent of Israel's Khan TV from Jerusalem. Mr. Stein, these protests uh, to us today watching seems that the, like the country has shut down. What's brought together so many diverse voices? You've got the ambassadors across uh, the world on strike. You've got Israeli missions shut down, flights shut down. Is this Mr. Netanyahu's end game or can he survive this? Will he have to roll back this so-called judicial reform? No, it's not his end game. We know we love to say a lot of times that it's Netanyahu's end game, but this time no one is saying it's his end game. The only question will he cancel the judicial reform legislation and delay it? And will he appoint back uh, Minister of Defense Gallant, which is just fired yesterday because he opposed the judicial reform and said it will cause uh, the army to melt down and increase Israel's security risk. So what are we seeing today are really massive protests and a massive strike, which we haven't seen in years in Israel. Even during COVID, I think, Israel wasn't locked down when it comes to these businesses like this uh, announcement for today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the public sector. We're talking on McDonald's around Israel. We're talking no flights abroad, from the main airport in Israel. So uh, this is what's going on right now. Tomorrow, by the way, no kindergartens, for example. Mm -hmm. So this is the strike um, but, that is coming to pressure on Netanyahu to and cancel isn't the reform. Netanyahu doing this in a bit to save himself on corruption charges? Is it likely that a verdict is going to go against him? Is this a sign of his fear? So he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place if he... Uh, takes back those uh, judicial reforms he's proposed. Apparently, even his lawyer has refused to represent him if these judicial reforms are not rolled back. Yes, this was a very interesting today that his lawyer said that if the judicial reform uh, will not be rolled back, he will stop representing him in court. But the story really is not at Netanyahu's trial. Mm -hmm. Netanyahu's trial was the question when it came... Uh, to the question if Netanyahu can speak about the reform or act regarding the reform. But I must say there is no real implication about the reform and his trial. The story here is completely different. There is mm -hmm. a lot of, of the Israeli public who fear that the reform will make them second-style citizens and uh, that won't be able to go to the court and that the Israeli government, when it is built up with right-wing uh, that some see as right-wing extremists and ultra-orthodox. Right. Many Israelis fear that this is going to be the decision they are going to take on the future of how Israel will look like, and they won't have the court to defend them. Right, Mr. Stein, thank you so much for joining us with your perspective. Of course, as we speak, the Israel ambassador on strike, the Israeli missions, the consulates, the embassy in New Delhi, all on strike, as is across the world. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. Let's go across the other big headline. Well... The Dalai Lama, the world's highest uh, Tibetan Buddhist leader, currently, of course, in exile in India for decades, has named an eight-year-old as the third highest Buddhist leader. This eight-year-old boy, who was born in the U.S. of Mongolian descent, is now the third highest spiritual Buddhist leader. The fact that the Dalai Lama has appointed him is extremely significant because, of course, China has been wanting to name all Buddhist spiritual leaders. China, in fact, has said that they will name the next Dalai Lama as well. The Dalai Lama and Tibetan Buddhists who follow him have said that no Buddhist leader appointed by the Chinese government can be accepted. In other news, one of the eight cheetahs that had been relocated to India from Namibia died today after developing a kidney infection in January. Sasha had shown signs of fatigue and weakness during a daily monitoring check. A medical examination had revealed that she was dehydrated and had kidney-related problems. Sadly, Sasha died today after that kidney infection. Well, before we end tonight, some good news for the Yadav family, especially, of course, Bihar Deputy Chief Minister Tejasvi Yadav and his wife, because all the last weeks have all been out questioning by the CBI, but now Tejasvi Yadav and his wife have welcomed their first child, a little baby girl. Just days after questioning from agencies, there's some good news for Tejasvi Yadav and his wife. Both welcomed their first child, a baby girl, today. Tejasvi Yadav tweeted, saying... God sent a gift in the form of a daughter. Tejasvi Yadav got married to his long-term friend Rachel Godino in December 2021. 